Hey there, camels. Today we're going to continue our exploration of locals. Um, last time we saw how you could define a local parameter. A local parameter is one that does not escape its region, which means that that this value that we're receiving as, as, as an argument, we're not storing it anywhere or building it in some structure that we're going to store somewhere. We know that it gets essentially entirely consumed within, within that function. Today we're going to generalize that and look at local variables within a function as well as see why we might need a local return value. Um, okay, so, so the context for this today is going to be in a little imperative function. So let's make our little imperative function here and let's just make sure that basic things are working. Um, and indeed they are. So we have our little imperative function, it has type unit or unit, all good. Um, now I want to go in this function and then we're going to, whoops, we're going to create a local variable x and we're just going to say that it's u right now. We'll, we'll see why in the end. Um, and then uh, let's make sure that works. And it does. We get a warning because it's unused. Um, but the idea here is that because I've labeled it local, what that means is that I'm not storing or doing anything strange with this variable in my function. So perhaps I have a lot of scary imperative code in here. And I know that because of this local annotation, I know that none of this scary imperative code stores x anywhere. So we can actually observe this. If I make a string ref up here, so now I have this string ref. Let's just make sure everything's still okay. Everything is still okay. Um, but then now, if in my scary imperative code, I tried to say string ref equals x, um, and then, whoops, and then do this. Now, this value escapes its region. And this is exactly what we should expect. My, my local here says that it doesn't escape its region, and yet I'm having it escape. So that's no good. So let's get rid of that. And then now we're back to working. Of course, let's get let's get rid of that warning. We don't want that warning. So I want to have an ignore x down here. Oh, this value escapes its region. That really shouldn't happen. But the reason that's happening is that the built-in ignore doesn't yet know about locals, right? This is all experimental being developed within within Jane Street, but for for you know available for experimentation outside. Um, and um, as we're developing it, there's, you know, there's still some sharp edges. So here, what we're going to do to fix this problem is let's just make a new ignore that has a better type. So this ignore is going to take a local argument of any type alpha and ignore it. And so now when we try, now, now all is well. Okay, so we have our local x um, and, and we ignore it. Okay, um, let's, let's keep going. So we can have a local x, we can have a local y. Um, and then now does this still work? Sure it does, um, but we want to be able to ignore multiple things, so that's fine. Um, so one interesting little thing here that happened is that um, I'm now building a tuple. So if we think about it, is this x and y, are they escaping into the tuple? No, they're not, because the tuple itself doesn't escape. Um, that that uh, OCaml is doing a certain amount of inference here to say that this, this structure that I'm building, because it refers to local, it must itself be local. And that's all, that's all well and good. Um, one other small side note, but is likely to, to sort of matter if you start tinkering around with this, um, is you might wonder, why am I ignoring and then returning unit? It might look more natural to say this. Well, now we get this value escapes its region. And the story behind that is a little complicated. It's a very good story, but it's a little complicated. We're not going to address it today. The, the upshot is, is that there's different rules in the sort of return slot of a function than there are everywhere else. So because this ignore is the thing that f returns, it's treated specially. It has sort of its own special little little rules for locality. We're not going to get into those rules today because they're a little complicated, and I want to motivate why they happen. Um, and so instead of doing that, we're just going to move this out of local, out of return position, and then just do it this way. And then now we're back to working. But that's probably worth making a little note. Return positions, also called tail positions, are treated specially. Watch out. Um, and uh, I, I don't have much more to say other than watch out for right now. We will come back to this in a future video. Um, okay, so we're back here. Uh, but now I have you and I have me. Uh, I want to I wanna maybe 
greet you and greet me. And we're going to do that by building up a list, just because that has kind of the right behavior for what we want to explore today. Um, so we're going to have hello and then x. And then we want greet y. OK, so this is all well and good. Let's try to compile it. It works with warnings, so let's get rid of those warnings. I don't like warnings in code. Um, OK, so this is all good. But, but now we should be a little dissatisfied with what we've built here because we're good functional programmers, and yet we have repeated ourselves. This operation is very similar to this, so let's abstract it in, in a function. So we're going to have a function greet which is going to take a string argument and then produce a string list. Um, and then it's going to, oh, let me not use the same variable. I'll use z here. Um, so then we're going to take a z, and we're going to greet c. OK, is that good? That is good. We're very happy with that. Um, now let's use it. What about that? Well, now we have a problem. We have a problem because right here, um, this value escapes its region. And the reason it does that is that this, the type that I've given for greet, it hasn't said anything about what it does with its argument x. And so maybe because of this type, it just says string arrow string list, it might store x somewhere. It might let x escape. We have this string ref lying around. Maybe it stores it in there. We don't know from the type. And so we have to assume that it, it might do that. Instead, I want to change my type here to force greet to promise that it's not going to store its argument anywhere. And when I do that, now we get a different error. Well, the different error is that I said here um, that this argument, which is now going to be called z, doesn't escape its region. But then I've stored it in this structure, which is then returned. And, and so that's no good. What we really want to say is we really want to say that this, um, uh, that this expression here, we don't want that to be sort of in its own region. We want that to be part of the surrounding region, right? The rule for locals is that a local, well, it's not a parameter anymore. It's really any kind of value. A local value does not escape its region. And yet, right here, this looks like a local value, z, that's escaping its region by being boxed up in a list and then being returned. And so what I want to do is I want to use a new keyword, exclave. And writing exclave here means that this, um, that this is considered part of its outer region, not part of this inner region. So let me, let me just state that again because it's a little strange. So this greet function creates a region. All functions create a region. I think I have that down here. Every function defines a region, yes. Um, but exclave re ends the region early. So the region has ended before I've created this. And because that region has ended before I've created this, and because z here is actually a parameter to my function, and I know that it, so therefore it came from an outer region, the z is not escaping here. And because there's no region to escape right here, this list that I'm creating around z is also not escaping. So let's see what happens when I try to compile this. Well, now this value escapes its region. Um, and the reason for that is that, um, well, why is that? This value doesn't really escape its region. There's no region to escape from. I think that's probably a bug. As in, it, it, there's a good reason that this, is, that this is a type error, but I think that error message is a bug. What it really is trying to say is that you can't, you can't have an exclave in a function without local there. And I'll explain that in just a moment, but let me, let me promise you that it works. So what exclave is doing is it's ending this region early, which means that the allocation associated with this, this list is actually happening down here in the region for f. It's not happening in the region for greet, because I've left that region with exclave. But I need to signal to my outer function that actually I can allocate in the, in the outer um, uh, function. Otherwise, the, the, uh, the calling convention gets a little confused. Um, so this local here, when I put local on a return value, it really means two things. One, it means that this function might actually allocate in its caller's region. 
and also it means that the value returned is a local value that therefore cannot escape. Um, so now that I've done this, everything fits together. So let, let me just sort of recap uh, a little piece of this. Oh, and I can also put in greet y down here. Uh, whoops, uh, not like that though, like this. Yes, yes, good. Um, so let me, let me just sort of recap the, the different pieces here. So we have here, x is local. I've defined it as local here. It's getting passed into greet. That's fine because I've said that greet isn't going to do anything bad with its argument. Then when building my list, I want to make sure that that list is built locally um, and that not only in, in, in not built locally anywhere, but actually built inside the region associated with f. And that's what exclave does. Exclave says that this region associated with greet ends right here. Um, and so therefore, all of this that happens afterward is not in that region. It's reasonable to ask, how can I use z here? Well, it's OK, because z is a parameter. And, and, and the compiler keeps track of the fact that, oh, parameters must have come from an outer region. They can't come from this local region. Um, and, and so that's what allows this. Then I need to have this local annotation here to say that, um, that this greet allocates a little bit in its, in its parent stack frame, and that this value, when it, when it is, is done, is going to be itself local and then can't, can't further escape. Right? If it's allocating in its parent's region, then the value it's producing had better not escape. That would be really bad. Um, so there's a lot of moving pieces here, but you can see sort of how it's all flowing around. Um, and one, one thing I just wanted to sort of highlight here is that I said that this z, we know that it's this parameter coming in. And that means if I say local a equals z in and change this to a, I think we'll have trouble. Um, oh, value a is local, so it cannot be used inside an exclave. That's because I've defined it locally here, and we sort of lost the fact that it's come from an outer region. Um, and so a local parameter is a little bit different than a local variable. And we'll explore that a little bit more in a future video. Um, anyway, let's go back to something that works here. And then I can add another little bit, bit down here. Exclave ends a region early, um, sort of earlier than it would naturally end. Um, OK, I think that's it for today. Lots more to come about how all of these features interact. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.